Hi there, my name is FixFox, and welcome to Heroes of Might and Magic 2. This is the F Heroes Edition, and today we are starting a brand new campaign. This is the final campaign that you will find in the Price of Loyalty expansion for Heroes of Might and Magic 2. We've completed the Price of Loyalty. We've completed the Descendants campaign. We just completed the Voyage Home. Now there's nothing left to do but to get right on in to Wizard's Isle. So let's load up and see what we are up against. Tales have recently been told of a mist-wreathed archipelago that has sprung up in the western seas, where nothing but water lay before. They are the legendary Shrouded Isles, wherein lies the Fount of Wizardry. It is said that every thousand years they rise forth from the ocean, and that whomsoever claims this power will reign ascendant for the next thousand. Even now, your rivals are surely aware of the archipelago's emergence and are laying plans for its conquest. Okay, so then there is a MacGuffin out in the middle of the Isles. The archipelago has risen, and if we don't get it, somebody else will, and then they will rule for a thousand years, yada, yada, yada. Of course, we don't want that to happen. We want to be the main big bad evil guy. I mean, I'm just saying, would we use our newfound power for evil or for good? I'd like to think for good, but for some reason, power corrupting and absolute power, absolute corrupting. I think that that is a very real thing. So, scenario one, the Shrouded Isles, your mission is to vanquish the warring mages in the magical Shrouded Isles. The completion of this task will give you a fighting chance against your rivals. We have the choice between 2000 gold, the power axe, which will be a plus two to attack, or the stealth shield, which will be a plus two to defense. So extra gold, extra attack, or extra defense. We are going to let the dice roll decide what we're going to do here. The dice roll indicate that we are going to roll a one. A one is going to be the 2000 gold. Let's make sure that our difficulty is on hard. And folks, let's dive right in to the final campaign, Wizard's Isle, Scenario 1, The Shrouded Isle. Oh boy. Well, we have Halon the Wizard. And I gotta tell you, um, nice to see that he's got this very nice army to start off with. I'm going, going to immediately arrange my troops just a little bit differently. I like to put my shooters kind of in the corners here. And then probably have the Steel Golems protecting... Oh probably protecting the Arc Magi. Note that Halon the Wizard does start off with Advanced Eagle Eye. He has the Advanced Scouting, and he has the Wisdom, which any hero for the Wizard faction will pick up first. So uh, no experience to speak of. He's still level one, so stats-wise, he's still zero, one, two, and two, but he does have some additional secondary abilities. Uh, looks like he does start off with Stone Skin, as any Wizard does, and other than that, that is it. There is nothing here. There's this nice road. Whether we go kind of this way to the west or this way to the northeast is a little bit beyond me. It looks like this is a thematic shipwreck where maybe we crashed and here we are. Um, I do see this halfling hole here. This looks like an immediate way for us to bolster our forces. I don't see us doing anything but going here first. And whether we go north or whether we go south, I don't know. Let's go to the halfling hole and then we will see if we can find out any more information. I'm hopefully trying to get a castle or a town because we have none. The group of halflings want to join us. We will go up to 73 halflings because there's a sawmill right here guarded by the lots of veteran pikemen. I'm guessing that the way to go is up north instead of to the south. So we got wood, ore, mercury, tons of resources, observation tower, and a sign, not to mention these creatures here. There is a town here with a boat. Oh no, is this another water-based map? I've said before, I will say it again, I don't love water-based maps, but we will do the very best we can with what we have. Blue player, you have lost your last town. If you do not conquer another town in the next week, you will be eliminated. Seven days to go. I don't think it's going to take us seven days. That would be quite the surprise. Um, it is a little bit silly of me, by the way. When I see Archipelago and I see the preamble text about these uh, amazing wizard isles rising from the depths interesting that i decide that oh it's weird that there should be a water-based map here if we're talking about archipelagos and some volcanic islands arising from the sea if that's the case though where did all these other creatures come from did everyone just descend upon this area and immediately start 
building ore mines and alchemist labs and sawmills. The, the theming doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but we will roll with it. This observation tower has shown me an awful lot. One sorceress castle, one wizard castle, and one dungeon or warlock castle. Another observation tower, some, some goodies in the ocean, gems. There's a boat here. I'm assuming that there's a place to land right there, kind of on the beach. Another observation tower here guarded by a pack of wolves. Um, I I think that first order of business is probably to clear out my area on my starting island here and then get into the boat as quickly as possible. We will see if this town of Hilltown can be upgraded or not. If it cannot be upgraded, we may come back later. We may use our considerable starting forces to start taking towns. Um, probably avoid this town first just because we don't want to pick up a town that's going to need some attention to upgrade. Maybe we go to Lombard. Maybe we go to Quicksilver. Um, wizards are generally better, I think, as a faction for a long late game scenario. But the sorceresses, they have this Shrine of the Third Circle here, which could be pretty easy to get. Um, that's probably the, going to be the direction that I head, unless something else pops up and is wild and crazy. It looks like there are heroes here to the east, and they have upgraded the dungeon, the, the Warlock Castle of Yorksford. So it is no longer a town, it is a castle. Holy cow. Looks like it's going to be earth, air, fire, and water elementals. It says we're going to take some losses. I... I don't know. Look at this terrain. Okay, this is the most amazing terrain I may have ever seen in my life. You have one avenue here, you have one avenue here, you can get through here, and you cannot get through here. One, two, three places to go. That is incredible. So we're going to see, I think it's the air elementals are the fastest with speed six and then speed five, speed four, speed three. Um, we're going to focus on the air elementals because they are going to get down the battlefield quickest. Because they go this direction, the steel golems should be able to step up one, two, three and prevent the air elementals from doing much more. I think that we will let them. Um, and now I'm starting to, I'm going to worry about these fire elementals a little bit more. Maybe because air elementals... Like, I don't really want them to get the drop on me and they can do 2 to 8 damage. Maybe I attack them with the rocks, actually. Try to take the first swipe out of them, and then the steel golems can step up and maybe stop the fire elementals from doing something nifty. Let's let's try that. Let's stone skin the rocks. Let's try to save rocks. I would rather save rocks than boars or the steel golems. In fact, the steel golems, if they just take a good solid whack for me, that'll be just fine for me. Uh, whether we kill 1 to 4 of these air elementals or take out some of these fire elementals. Do I care so much? One, two, three, four. The water elementals are not going to get into the fight next time, but these fire elementals will. Maybe if I could save the damage onto the boars, that'd be fine. If I was the fire elementals, I'd probably go for the boars. So let's kill one to four fire elementals. We end up killing four, which is great. We have not lost a rock yet. I'm going to let the rocks deal with these air elementals from this point on. One to two more fire elementals. Let's wait on the boars. And then interesting that the steel golems were the ones to take the damage and not the boars here. I guess this is a question. One, two, three. Do I do I attack these water elementals with the steel golems? If I do, then I can kill one. But I'm going to need to kill one at some point, and I've got plenty of hit points. I, I think I do. I think I go out right now. I start trying to do some damage. I'll start to mix things up. Even though there's no tactical advantage in the sense that, you know, the boars are still going to have to take a retaliation when they do attack. Uh, but at least I can start to get some damage onto these guys, and maybe that will save a boar anyway. One to two, we end up killing one more water elemental, one boar goes down. These steel golems are so tough, they still have plenty of hit points. I'm not going to move the rocks down. Let's lose one steel golem, one boar, and let's call it a day. Okay. Uh, and from here... Hmm. Yeah, from here, we're just going to continue to destroy this water elemental. We will back off with the boars, and the rest of our ranged troops can hopefully bring down these numbers in a significant way. Looks like one more steel golem will go down. And yet, I do like these losses much, much better. 31 hit points, there's no danger in losing one to the retaliation. 
and I like the way we fight this fight. We do fight that fight much better than the AI did. Again, I, I'll chalk that one up to the terrain that we noted at the very beginning. Scouting or expert wisdom? I'm going to take expert wisdom. The fact that I see these castles that started off just castles makes me think that maybe it's in my best interest to take those as quickly as possible and maybe they have some nice goodies in them. Wow, a library. This is scary. Seeing what I see here makes me think that this town is not going to be upgradable. It is. Oh, I was a little bit worried there. And I am going to upgrade it. I see no reason why I should not. In fact, if I can get this Mage Guild level 1 soon, I would love to do that. I would love to do that. Here's the question. With 5,700 gold left, is it in my best interest to have Halon clear out everything here? Especially the ore mine, especially the sawmill, and then have another hero jump in the boat? I think that, that is going to be what I do. And I can see no reason to deviate from that with the exception of maybe wanting to get one of these castles. Is it possible to get one of these castles day before day one? And I think that the answer is probably yes. If I have a secondary hero set sail from here, 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 and then just sail to right here, perhaps I can clear out much, most of this and then have Halon get in the boat on day six, land on day seven, and then attack on day one. But that's the timing that you have to take. So you got three more days is really what it is. You have three days with Halon, two days to clear this out, and then to get back. That's going to be a little bit tight, but I think we can do it. That means that we're going to ignore this. We're going to ignore this. Um, and then we will just try and pick up here, here, and here. If we can get the 750 gold from that artifact, we will. But otherwise, let's just do the very best we can and see where this takes us. Lots of iron golems. Am I really concerned? Not too much. Not too much. I will take Marini just because she does have some of these wizarding troops. And I am going to let her leave all of her troops save one four. No, because she's going to end up trading off her boat is the plan. So we're going to have her jump in the boat now. And eventually we're going to have her come back around. I'm loath to not pick up this sign. But I think that I've got too much to do right now. I don't have the time to go out of my way to pick up one sign. Green is in force. If they have a shipyard here and they build a boat, that could be pretty scary. There are defenders here in Yorksford. No defenders here. No defenders here. Good to know. Good to know. And maybe they don't even see me here until they get this observation tower. Perhaps these green heroes, Crodo of which is the strongest, maybe they won't even know that I'm here. Four leaf clover. I am always happy to see that. 1500 gold from the sea chest. And again, I am going to go the long way around the horn. Let's fight this fight. I don't think I can do much better, but in the interest of preventing attrition, let's let's do the very, very best we can. I believe that these golems are always going to go for these Arc Magi. I don't think that they are going to split. I was very wrong. I was very wrong. And so we are going to let them go for the halflings. I'm a little bit surprised at that. I guess I should have uh, read the tea leaves when we saw the auto combat, it indicated that we would lose some halflings. That's only going to happen if the enemy actually crowds around your halflings. Maybe though, as you notice there, by covering up the halflings, the AI stopped going in this direction and it started going kind of in this way. Uh, these golems and these golems are going to be on a collision course, but these ones are probably going to go north. And so we might be able to dice up this fight a little bit by using this one little bit of terrain here. That's my plan, and I think it's a good plan. I think it's a very good plan. So we should have one, two, and then one stacks uh, that we can kind of waste their movement. In fact, I may even move the boars out of the way or the rocks out of the way just so we can uh, do that one more time. Let's let's move the rocks out of the way. They move back down. And then let's see what these golems do if they just charge across the battlefield or if they try to go back down towards the now available halflings they do look how much movement i'm wasting on them um and, and at this point i've i've lamented in the past oh i don't want to cheese the ai this doesn't feel necessarily uh, necessarily like cheesing the ai this feels more like understanding the game and winning the game in the most efficient way possible especially when it comes to uh, avoiding losing troops i don't see any reason why i shouldn't uh, play the game to the best of my abilities i'm i'm like this wealthy billionaire who says to himself well i have this offshore account and the offshore account uh, doesn't have to pay taxes because it's based in i don't know 
somewhere in the Dominican Republic or something like that. Uh, and they consider themselves smart because they found the legal tax loophole. And they have. And uh, can I really say too much bad about it? Eh, I really want everybody to pay their fair share of this and that, but I know that billionaires play by different rules than you or I. So, hey, they just played the game better than I did. And in that same way, I'm now playing the game here better than the AI would have. And for that, we lose many less troops. Diplomacy or mysticism? The last campaign that we did, the final scenario in Voyage Home, I really wanted to make diplomacy work. I really wanted to get a huge stack of six level creatures that were dotting the map. It wasn't meant to be. I don't know if there'll be a chance here, but knowing that I am the wizards, there's a chance that mysticism might still be good for me. I don't see any water or, or wells. Um, so I'm just going to have to take what's best for me now. And I will plan on not doing a diplomacy game that may change, but for now, we will plan on not doing that. This is a fight that I, I assumed that I would just fight. I'm not too sure. Looking at ogres, lots of ogres. That's a little bit concerning. They are very slow and we may do the exact same thing that we just did with all those golems. Where we, where we shoot them down before they even get to us, and we will probably crowd around the troops that we want to try and save. Um, that's what we're going to do, and so for that reason, I'm going to try and save this bottom... Uh, I'm going to focus on this bottom stack of ogres, because I'm guessing that the AI will once again focus on the halflings and not the Arc Magi. I am correct. And then I will juggle these ogres' attention back and forth by moving the rocks in front or away from these ogres. Interesting to note, I'm guessing that the only reason why I really lost one rock is because they ended up getting a little too impetuous and they flew across the battlefield because they just wanted to mix it up. They wanted to get into the fight and that ultimately proved to be a little bit of their downfall. I'm guessing that's what happened. Hard to say unless I actually uh, fought the fight uh, and just watched the AI play it. But I like this strategy. As you can see, if you have two movement and one of your movement points is spent going up or down or up or down it's going to take you much longer to get across the battlefield than otherwise you would have been able to so again do i feel bad hey the game is hard um i think that i think that for a little bit when i first started playing f heroes 2 i said to myself well i don't want to be cheesy i want to do things right and uh, that's i i don't think that, that was a bad decision but the ai has gotten really good it's gotten really good and so i don't feel bad at all about doing my very best to win these scenarios as best as i possibly can so uh, i think i noted especially in ghost planet 1.1 that playthrough it was pretty obvious to me that uh if you got a trick up your sleeve you better you better use that trick here's a question for you do i get the mage guild knowing that i'm probably not going to get back here to hilltown before we hop in this boat yeah, I think so. Unless we decide not to pick up the sawmill. We have two more days to go here, sawmill, and then back. We may even get another hero just to help clear all this out. You know what? Let's do that. Let's, you know what? Let's do that. We'll pick up a third hero, which knowing that we only have one boat is kind of a bad idea. But with Wilfrey, he'll be able to pick up Mercury, and I can probably use him actually to fight these other boars. And then... We can clear out these uh, additional resources, these additional uh, enclaves of troops. When I just need movement points to make this plan work, having another hero, especially since my heroes are all level one, level two anyway, it doesn't hurt my feelings too bad to kind of split my troops. Aha, so we see for the first time Orange Luna, it looks like she's got level one, two, and three troops. So nobody is starting off with, I don't know, a stack of black dragons per se. And I'm just fine for that. That's probably the last thing that I need is someone to just be a little bit too excited and and try and make this harder than it has to be. We're going to move all the troops over to Wilfrey. Wilfrey's going to go out of his way and then come back before the before Halon needs to go encouraging. I say encouraging, but really I mean forcing my troops to travel twice as far as they ought to. And that should be very, very fine for me. Uh, the best thing about these fights has been talking about their 
the speed of these creatures and being able to use my ranged troops advantage against them. Uh, recently I did a tier list video for all the units here in Heroes of Might and Magic 2. Wow, 80 halflings just killed 7 dwarfs, that's pretty amazing. And, and I feel bad sometimes putting some of these non-shooting, non-flying troops inherently lower than other ones because I'm like, well, are they really that much worse it's just because you don't fly, just because you don't shoot? And unfortunately, the answer is, yeah, you're just worse. Um, those those special abilities, let's call them special abilities, are absolutely game changing and strategy defining. You, if, if you are able to attack the enemy in unique and flexible ways, you're always going to do better. And so that has to be reflected in the tier rankings, even if, even if it's going to um, make my heart sad to just see them struggle a little bit. We're going to give up one bit of mercury just so that Halon can fight this fight and then get back to the boat either here or here. Um, I, I don't have the... Oh dear. oh dear, I have to go out of my way. One movement point. I don't have time to go into the Alchemist lab and get everything I want. It's going to be close margins is kind of what I'm saying. It's going to be very important that I get this right. So uh, let's make sure that we are precise. Oh no, I have to go all the way around? <gasps> I thought I could just sneak right through here. That changes things drastically. Hmm. How many movement points do we have? We have 900. Three, four, five, six, seven. We, I think we can attack and get back, but it's gonna be close. It's going to be very close. So let's attack and let's go back, but it's going to be close. Okay, no losses there and we're happy for the experience. We have to head out now and we should be able to get into a boat if it's right there. That's the plan anyway. Oh boy, I hope that this works out in my favor. And in fact, I, I wish I had some somebody to ferry troops over from here. But just with the way this is, this has worked out, it has not worked out quite like I thought it would. So Wilfrey... I'm going to get the alchemist lab. We're going to get here. We're going to go around, but make sure that he is not impeding Halon in any way. And I think it's going to be much less movement points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight versus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess it doesn't matter. One, two, three. No, it does. Because that's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you will feel so silly. You will feel so silly. If on your way to getting in the boat, you miss your your window to attack Quicksilver with all these troops before they get the potential to resupply. So we are going to go here. We're going to have just a little bit of movement points left. 238. That's going to be plenty for what we need to do. Um, but hmm, hurts my heart a little bit. We're even going to land here so that we can just do the cross body. I think that with 238, it's going to be plenty of movement points. But we are not going to leave this to chance. Not at all. Halon's going to go immediately into the boat. And Marini is going to have some troops here. You know what? Um, we can do this, actually. Because you can move troops from the land to the ocean or from a boat onto the land with a visiting hero. We've got three heroes worth of movement points here in just a second. We're going to swap these troops out of the boat here 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 back 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 and and be absolutely crazy with our movement our poor troops are going to be so mad they're like are we in the boat are we out of the boat make up your mind we don't care either way just choose one i'll say well i'm very very sorry my friends uh note that to get the ivory tower we would have to get the mage guild and the foundry we're going to pick up the foundry now but there's no way before the beginning of the new week we are going to end up getting all of the troops that we need oh boy Oh boy. Oh, Falagar is going down. He doesn't see us. He doesn't have an observation tower, so he has no idea. And that's actually very good information. Look at this. So, Orange, I believe, can absolutely see us. Our observation tower can spot their observation tower, so Orange can see us. That means I'm guessing that Red and Orange are not allied. If they were allied, they would share that vision, and I don't think that Falagar would do that. As it stands, he did. And that just makes me think that we've got an, an opportunity here. We're going to move the, the luck over. 
We're going to have Marini do just a little bit of the shuffle here. Might as well have Wilfrey fight this fight. And then we should easily dispatch these boars. I say easily and then we lose eight halflings. Uh, can we do better? I don't think so. We can cast Stone Skin. What's our spell power at? Is it two? We might as well cast Stone Skin now. Because this battle is going to be over very quickly. And I actually don't know who the secondary target is going to be for these boars. Huh. I lost a lot of boars there. I don't love that. Three to four. We kill all four. Might as well do damage where we can. Oh yeah, might as well do damage where we can. And then one whole stack of boars goes down. Almost. Almost. Yeah, it looks like the boars are just trying to do damage where they can, and there's not much they are able to do. So, we're going to wrap this fight up. Three boars. That's okay. Expert wisdom for Wilfrey. Okay, sure. Why not? And then, rather than... Oh boy, if there's rogues guarding this artifact, I'll be very, very sad. I think I have enough movement points. I might as well just go pick it up. There's a green dragon. Can I defeat a green dragon? I can. I can definitely defeat a green dragon. Is it worth it? I'll be able... To, he's a... Green dragons are a four-speed creature. So my arc magi are going to get to go first. My boars are going to get to go first. And then they will go. So I will be able to stone skin my halflings, which I consider my best stack right now. We'll mitigate some damage, but not a lot. But it's 750 gold a day. So let's do the best we can here. And I am going to stone skin the halflings. Immediately. Just immediately. And chew through these 200 hit points as quickly as we can. Let's not... Uh, stack our troops on top of each other. Let's move the boars kind of into this preparatory position Right here. So that way the steel golems can maybe move up a little bit here Yep, how did I know 123 hit points left we're gonna lose a rock. Oh, no I meant to move the rocks down and I missed I just misclicked It's very very sad. That's a lot of damage. We just missed out on uh, the halflings might as well attack might as well attack here. Wow, and the, and the dragons are going to get one more attack off. We would have been able to save that rock. We would have been able to save that rock. Somehow we did even better than the AI did, but still. Uh, I'm, I'm sad how that fight went just because it could have been so much better. Can we reach? We actually cannot reach. We're going to need to have Marini go this way. Can't get the windmill. We just didn't get it. And then Halon. Oh no, he has to go out of his way to get these troops back. We go here. We can go here and then land. Wilfrey, you better make it. <gasps> Wilfrey can't do it. No. Oh gosh. Oh, this is so sad. This is so sad. There's a chance I can still reach, but I'm guessing not. Oh, and those are the breaks. What a devastating mistake. That was so devastating. So, uh, if I was to do it again, Wilfrey would have taken one more step over so Marini could get here and then get back. Um, but the movement points just didn't work out. There is a chance... I'll take those losses of halflings. There's a chance that Quicksilver's not very upgraded and we could take this town very quickly. There's a chance. Hard to say, but uh, that's going to be our best hope. So we are lamenting the fact that we are not going to take this town before the beginning of the first week. I'm guessing that there are now some defenders. There's going to now be lots of defenders. The, the worst thing is that Dawn can get in now. I didn't realize Dawn was there, and so I landed carelessly right here. If I'd landed right here, she could not have gotten into Quicksilver. We have really cost ourselves some tactical advantages here. That's very, very concerning. Island of Wolcott. All right. Um, 
I'm still good to have taken the 750 gold. It's just, it's not going to be worth it. Based off of everything I've seen so far, it's not going to be worth it. So, uh, no major purchases. We might as well get our Mage Guild now. And the next turn, we should be able to get our Ivory Tower. Yep. And now this, taking this town has become incredibly difficult, but we must. We've kind of, we've really forced this decision. This is going to hurt a lot, but the AI says we're going to win with a couple of stone skins. Maybe we can do even better. If I was the enemy, who would I focus? Still, probably these halflings. Although, my rocks are for sure going to get into the fight and try and deal with these magi. Perhaps it's best if I stone skin the rocks. Do we stone skin the rocks or do we stone skin the halflings? The halflings are going to do more damage and they're going to take more damage. So we should do that with two defense, three spell power, two knowledge. Dawn could have a tremendous army. It'll be tough to say. Let's stone skin the halflings and just kind of go from here. We can either kill 11 to 14 halflings or we can kill not quite one magi. The magi are going to get to go before my rocks. I think that we do damage where we can. Since we cannot for sure kill one Magi, in fact, it's not even a for sure, we, we for sure cannot kill one Magi. I think that we take damage off where we can, and then hope that the rocks are going to be able to defend these mat, are going to stop these Magi. They are not going to be able to at this point, not anymore. That's no longer an option because the boars are a two-hex creature, and they are now defending those Magi. Um, in fact, the rocks are going to have to chew through boars before they can... Def uh, defeat these magi and because they are shielded I can't even really just uh, bombard the magi from afar hmm. less than ideal this has been a less than ideal start I can certainly say that but uh, we're gonna do the best we can the rocks decided to stay in their castle and deal with my rocks here the steel golems might as well get across the battlefield and try and breach the moat I think that their hit points are going to be very, very important. I think I must try and kill boars here and here. We must try and kill the boars. Otherwise, we're never going to touch these magi, and that will be devastating. Do we still? Who do we stone skin? I think we still. I think we stone skin our ranged creatures. Do we do full damage to the rocks and kill one, or do we do half damage to boars? And kill two to three. I think that we do full damage to the rocks. Full damage is going to be better than half damage. The boars are going to go into the moat. And next turn they will be at least a threat. Rocks are going to continue to try and chew through the boars. And I know that the rocks can say, Oh, all your troops are over here. I'm going to fly behind you and get into your back line here. I know that they can. I... Don't think I can worry about that right now. I don't think there's any reason to attack shielded magi. There's just no reason. One to two boars or five to eight halflings. If I put the damage onto these boars, maybe the rocks can defeat them next turn. Maybe. Maybe. Um, one thing I hadn't considered, and perhaps I should have, is that I do have a 20% chance to dispel beneficial spells. There are two beneficial spells on these magi. That might not be a terrible decision. But the problem is, is that it is absolutely gambling, knowing that it is a 20% chance. We can only kill, again, one to two boars. These boars are going to get into the fight. I think that we focus our damage in other places. There's nowhere where, where we can do full damage. Hmm. There's 24 hit points worth of halflings here. We can for sure kill one rock here. If we kill the one rock, then maybe somebody else will kill them on the retaliation. We now have access to their magi, who are still going to do full damage because there is no melee penalty for their troop type. And the steel golems are just rusting. They're just full of rust here in the water. Might as well take out their ranged troops now. We needed to deal with them at some point. We certainly are dealing with them now. The shield has worn off, and so that feels okay. Let's stone skin the boars. I would prefer to keep the rocks, but the boars 
are just the bigger and better stack, especially in the instance that they're probably going to end up taking damage from these fire elementals. Do I kill the one rock? I think I do. And then I'll save damage on the retaliation from the fire elementals. Ow. The fire elementals prefer not to do damage. They prefer to just head to the rocks as soon as possible. And for what, I ask you. We're going to move in a way that our other troops can get in here and the steel golems will engage with the fire elementals. That's some good morale on, on the steel golems. They are, they are excited to be here. They're like, oh boy, my favorite thing, defeating the enemy. I love it. All right, I'm glad you're excited because I'm just kind of meh. Yeah, now you attack the boars. These steel golems are having the fight of their lives. I am very impressed with them. Okay, we're not going to be able to kill these magi before they get to go. That's going to be one more round of turret shots. That's going to be whatever damage they do right here. It ends up being a lot, but uh, this should be the last round of combat. And this ended up being so, so critically expensive. And it was, and it was the slimmest of margins. If we had landed on day seven, none of this would have happened. Absolutely, absolutely critical. So uh, we're going to take the gambler's lucky coin, a nice cloak, endless purse of gold. We learned to dispel magic. That's pretty okay. I think we take navigation. We only have two slots left. There's lots of things I would rather have. I think we take the navigation here over the diplomacy though. Well, if we take diplomacy, we can always surrender with a reduced cost. I don't know how much, how much we're going to be in the boats. If I'd had basic navigation, I wouldn't have had any problem getting from point A to point B. The navigation might be more Wow, this is this is actually a tough decision. The navigation might be more important to make sure that we don't miss out on tactical landings in the future. I'm going to take the diplomacy. Um, maybe it'll come in handy negotiating with troops, but m especially because I've got two gold generating items, a 500 extra gold per day purse and the 750 gold trunk or whatever it is yeah we're gonna take we're gonna take diplomacy red players vanquished so yeah that could have gone a lot better but it went okay and really the prize is, is excellent and they were unable to purchase all these troops okay i feel much better than i did if this town was completely bought out i would have been just so sad so very sad i need the library to get this upgraded ivory tower but my first order of business is to get this ivory tower and then we will consider where we get troops in the future. We got lots of troops amongst our two towns. But there's only one boat. We do have a shipyard here. We do. We only have three wood though. Let's see if we can find some other things on the map, like a sawmill. There's five more wood. There's 10 more wood. So all of our problems with wood have been solved. I think that we try and get troops over here as quickly as possible just so we can roll into probably Yorksford. We've seen lots of green enemies over here. That means that they probably cleared out all the mines and all the creatures. I think I'll feel better about defeating warlocks because then also I'll have the long-term better castles of wizard, wizard, warlock. I think that's what we do. I, I don't even know if we stay here another day. I think that we purchase all the troops we can here right now. Well, 1,900 gold. That's not a lot. Maybe we wait one more day. Let's go adventuring. Let's see what we can find. Just taking one step at a time. Fire elementals. But they're that that's empty because they've already purchased those. And next turn we will get back and then into the boat. I'm going to, I, I'd like to get this crystal mine. But it's too far away. And I don't... I might need one hero on every island just so I can have one person in a boat pick up troops without disembarking. And so if I'm going to have another hero who will play that role for me, 
then a secondary hero can just walk in and get this crystal mine later. So let's do that. Let's split these boars. This is not a great fight. I don't like this fight at all. We're going to lose most of, if not all of these troops. We can shield though. We're going to get to go first. We can shield. We're going to have the separate boars getting down the battlefield. And the prize will be the crystal mine. We're already taking so many losses anyway. Yeah, we're taking so many losses anyway. I think that we do this. And we will win, but it's going to be costly. It'll be a little bit better if we are able to shield our Arc Magi. So let's shield. And I don't actually know how much that's going to impact the Orc Chief's decision about who they target. I do not know. Uh, we're going to attack this middle stack of orcs because I'm going to anticipate one stack of boars slots here and one stack of boars slots there. So that may be incorrect. I may find that to be incorrect soon, depending on how long these boars stay alive. But we will see. So far, the damage is low. That's good. That's good. The morale is terrific here. And I wonder if the morale came through just like this when the battle was initially calculated. Uh, I could cure for 30 hit points. I'm going to do that. I'm going to cure for 30 hit points. And all the damage that these orc chiefs is completely and totally mitigated. We're going to try and kill one whole stack. We almost do. One hit point left. One hit point left. And then the boars are just, they're going to take a hit. And I would rather lose boars than anybody else at this point. And that's just fine. Um, does it matter? I might use the halflings to kill this. Oh, I want the halflings to help these boars not take so much damage. Six to nine damage. Should we just kill one whole stack? Let's just kill one whole stack. And then that way we don't take the retaliation and the boars will stick around just a little bit longer. That'll give the steel golems time to get up here. So the... Yeah, the Arc Magi, that was still a good cure because there's still going to be... Well, no, it was not a good cure because the Orc Chiefs aren't going to do anything. There's only one Orc Chief left. They weren't going to do five damage, were they? I don't think so. Well, okay, so that was that was a little bit of a bad decision. I, I didn't realize until, I was, until I'd already made the decision. I saw something that could be great, and I leapt at it. And that was, that was a mistake. One more Orc Chief goes down. One, two, three. These... Steel Golems are one more turn away. And that's okay. They're going to get into the fight very, very quickly. They're going to need to go here, though. They're going to slot right here into this six stack. Because these this boar is going to go down soon, and then this boar will kind of slide up and try to take that opportunity away from these orcs. Okay. Ultimately, those, this fight uh, is ending up much better than previously anticipated. That's great. That's great. One hit point left. It's I'm, I'm not going to be able to save a boar, so let's just get the damage off while we can. And six on six, Steel Golems are going to uh, do a tremendous job. Okay. Yeah, this fight went excellent. I've got no complaints. Um, none whatsoever. I'm just going to skip. Whack them. And once again, the Steel Golems are just... Big, tanky, wonderful guys. Ore mine, crystal mine, I'm glad that we made the decision to do what we're doing here. Um, sending another hero up will be a good choice. It really will be. I think that we wait to hire a boat here because I think that as Halon goes by, we'll be able to get the troops over and I want that extra thousand gold to just go onto him. I do think that we consider if we make any purchases here. I If we do end up taking golems, we might be able to drop them off, have them go into the Freeman's Foundry, and then have them come back nice, sharp, and shiny. Um, we will see, though. I'm not going to make that upgrade at this time. So. I guess I was a little wondering, I was wondering a little bit if the enemy green here would kind of hop in the boat. It looks like they have not. I don't know where Luna went, but she's out and about somewhere. I'm going to wait on the crystal, and I'm going to wait on the ore. Right now, troops are more important, and I, and I want to get over to green. Before too much else happens. Uh, the troops that we purchase are going to be a little bit a little bit rough here. I guess I didn't think this through. 
I hit, I hit purchase all and it purchased the highest tier creatures first. And maybe I should have waited on these iron golems. In fact, I think I could have. In fact, I think I should have. 16 halflings. There are 18 halflings here. There are eight halflings here. But there's going to be lots more magi over here. So I think I'd rather have three arc magi, five magi, and then I'll fill out this other slot, maybe with boars, maybe with rocks, whatever else is in that other army. And I think I leave these boars and these halflings for now. Halon hops in the boat. Wait, we got more gold. I almost messed that up. Very, very much so. In fact, Marini's got some time to go out of her way. She probably could have or should have done that before anyway. Okay, and with this gold though, now I think that we... I think that we will actually buy out the rest of these golems, because we're going to commit to having some space there for them. I'd love to bring these other troops. For now, they're just going to wait. As we head back, uh, I see just the very tip top of a stone hinge, the plus one to spell power. So we will take a look at that. Maybe we'll get something there later. Purchases, none here. N none here because the orchard's not going to be that big of a deal just yet. Maybe later it will, but for now I'm not too concerned. Luna is back. Okay. We're going to go first with Wilfrey. And I suppose it'll actually be Wilfrey that picks up all that. Because I want Marini to have maximum movement points as we do our drive-by. So she can pick up golems, take them to the Freeman's Foundry, and get them back all in one turn. That makes the most sense to me. We do have enough to get the upgraded ivory tower, actually. Oh, we do. 4,000 gold. I think that you'd prefer just having troops rather than high quality troops. We may never upgrade those magi. It's not that expensive of an upgrade. But I'm aware that it is somewhat spendy. Um, I would love to pick up a hero over here to go get this. I'm going to wait again. Troops are more important. Right now, let's just focus on getting troops and then we will get out and about. Let's go here. Here, take the golems. Go to the Freeman's Foundry. And then, because I'm so low on movement points, I'm actually just going to go to over here. And then next turn, I'll be able to land. And that'll give me more time to get more gold, more stuff. And make one nice clean handoff with whatever's left here in this town. We've got 4,000 gold. We have 4,000 gold. Our troops are not going to cost... 10,000 gold. We're going to spend 4,000 now because we're going to get almost 4,000 next turn. And then we're going to land on day six and carry on our way. Perfect. So our first week, we kind of fumbled the turn. I say kind of, I mean, really, like it was a mistake. My bad, my bad. But I think that overall, our two week plan is just about flawless. Just about. Wilfrey's going to go to here. Oh, I'm not going to be able to get those 10 golems upgraded, am I? I'm going to try. I just don't think I'm going to be able to. Here, here, back. And here. Yeah, Wilfrey's not going to be able to get these golems over and back. How many movement points left? 501. Oh, this is a bad idea. Could you imagine if I did it twice? Could you imagine if I did it twice? The only nice thing is that I do have a better margin for error since it's day six instead of day seven now. And because there's some margin for error, I am going to try it because an additional steel, 10 steel golems could be game breaking. Okay. And we still have enough. So perfect. Flawless. Nailed it. Happy for it. Do I keep the gold on a secondary hero to open up slots? I think no. If the enemy backdoors me, that would be terrible. But I would certainly not want to have Halon 
lose out on that gold, say that I'm unable to rehire that hero for some reason. I'm fully well aware that having useless artifacts in all these slots is a bad deal. Um, I think I've got plenty of slots here though, and I'm just going to play it safe and keep everything on my one really strong hero. So last kind of look here though, is this enough? They're up to fifth level creatures. Unless I can get the sixth level creatures now, we should take this castle. And if we're right here, they will not be able to resupply Sabu. Sabu is going to be stuck. Sabu is going to be the hero that is defending this castle. I think that we push our fight now. 26 seal golems is a lot. And I really like that. And I do like the 20, the two magi over the 26 halflings. So I think that we land, we, we take our shots and we just go and do the very best we can right now. If there's a hero here in the darkness, that was a calculated decision based off of everything I've seen. I've seen three or four green heroes and none of them had a crazy army. If there is a hero out there with a crazy army, I made the best decision with the information that was available to me. And that's not too bad. Okay, so uh, we don't see any additional defenders here. But we are always a little bit worried. Because I'm scared about that fight a little bit, I am, of course, as you can see, doing other stuff. I've mentioned in previous playthroughs that you can always tell if I'm not very confident about a fight. Because I will put it off until the very last thing and I will go and do other things. This is an example of that. Having our other heroes do other stuff first. Useless things. Things that don't really matter. But here we are. I almost wonder if I should get another boat here. I wish I hadn't sent Wilfrey down now. Because if I had another boat here, I could have Wilfrey buy out Hilltown. tomorrow and then just shuffle troops into the boat with Marini I could still maybe do that yeah I can still do that it's just gonna cost me 2,500 more gold when I pick up another hero to make that happen less than ideal I it wasn't worth getting some additional halflings on the first day so big mistake here I don't love it as we go by, though, we can get the sea chest, and that'll help make up for the gold cost. Okay, we've put this decision off long enough. Glorious victory, I thought it would be, but I'm always just a little bit scared. Scared is maybe the wrong word. How about cautious? Cautious implies that we're aware that there's risks, but we are willing to be decisive and to do damage where we can. Uh, in this instance, do we just destroy these centaurs? They have 50 hit points on them. We're going to do 70 to 90 damage, but it's going to be full damage. Whereas otherwise we're going to be doing half damage everywhere else. I think we just take out the whole stack of centaurs. I think so. And the enemy is opting to fly across the battlefield and come straight for us. That one centaur I'm not worried about at all. I wish I had a magic arrow or some other offensive spell. I do not have one and that's okay. Eventually, I think that I can get these magi. Um, I want to say unclogged, but that's not the word. Unencumbered. Yeah, maybe right here. Definitely right here. And then maybe next time the two magi, they will do the damage onto this one centaur. Depending on how this damage here goes on these griffins. It's going to take a while to take down those hydras. They might go one, two, though. How about we defeat the griffin here? We prepare for the Hydras to come out next time. And then in one turn, after we take one more round of damage from this uh, Ballista here, then we should be able to defeat the Hydras. Even moving Steel Golems right into their face, hoping to encourage them to attack. So they are deep enough. Never mind. If you're going to get good morale and... Good luck on both of your attacks. We don't even need to strategize any further. No point. Sailor's Astro Lobe of Mobility. I am just fine with that. That's a good artifact. <gasps> Logistics. For somebody who needs one more secondary skill and I have one slot left. Oh, yeah. I'm going to take Logistics. You better believe it. Let's take a quick peek in here. This Mage Guild's actually important with the Magic Arrow. 
and it may be that I get the second level mage guild right now. I think that's actually going to be the best thing for me, the very best thing. It's a little bit of a gamble as far as what am I going to get? There's no guarantee at this point that I can hold on to this town, but picking up the cold ray for a wizard is going to be excellent. The haunt, I don't really love it, but okay, we'll take it. And then the dragon slayer, sure, why not? Okay, so we have a new marketplace. I think we have one marketplace now only. We have two marketplaces, that's good. And then this town's actually pretty well on its way to being upgraded. I think, okay, so we still need the maze to get the green tower. They must have been just short on gems. There's a good chance that, unless I can find a gem mine soon, it might take me some time. It might take me some time to get out and about and to move. Um, towards getting dragons. I might just focus on with two wizard towns trying to get as many giants and titans as possible. That might be more of my speed. I'm a little scared. I must take on Jezebel. No losses. But I'm scared that there is an enemy hero just here off in the distance and I don't want them to take Yorksford and then make me fight this fight all over again. We're going to go back. We're going to wait overnight. That's going to recoup our spell points up to 30. And then we'll pick up the observation tower and go from there. So, week one, we fumbled our turn. Week two, I, I think that by the by the end of week two, this feels okay. The only thing I could have done better would somehow to have been to have gotten this third castle. The likelihood of that, though, very low, very low. So uh, let's end our turn. Okay, week of the dog. And you know I. I'm going to take two steps out of the town. I'm going to pick up another hero. It'll be Flint because he's going to have a six level creature. Or excuse me, a six speed creature. Wouldn't that be wonderful if he had a, a six tier creature? Oh, never mind. We're just going to move all the halflings over. And then I just need to see what else is here. Aha. I almost got back into the boat. I almost got back into the boat. But instead... Cut of the Magi, Trading Post, Gems, Sulfur, Wood. This is a, this is a archipelago. This is a, uh, an area I cannot afford to lose. Um, Flint is going to stay right here. Wilfrey's going to pick up these halflings and then um, he's going to do this swap here next turn. I'm not going to end up buying a hero here. Marini's going to stay in the water. You can go to here, pick up the snake ring, so blessed spells are half cost. Uh-oh. In my haste, I might have made it so I'm not going to be able to get as far as I wished I, or, or as far as I wanted to. I feel like I'm making some poor choices. I'm having some opportunities, and then I'm just making some mistakes. I, I do want to get... I don't really care about the Arm of the Martyr, but I do want that campfire... But without pathfinding, I'm definitely not going to go through the swamp just to make that happen. I, I want to make sure that I show up at this town with Agar. Locked and loaded. But there's a part of me that wants to find a way to formulate a plan that I can get troops here to here and then fight. I don't think that's going to be possible. I think that we just set off and we hope that Green was unable to upgrade two castles and that they were trying to upgrade Yorksford. And that's why you saw the... Hydra's here. And so hopefully there's just not nearly so much here defending Sorpagal. I think that that's going to be best for us. So 4,100 gold. I really don't think that there's any other purchases at this time. We could have maybe gotten the orchard last time. Oh well. Oh well. And Flint for now is just going to stay right where he's at. Uh, yeah. Looks like the enemy is not upgrading any troops any further. They're not training anybody. Let's take our second... Warlock Castle. This has actually turned out to be a little bit of a fight, didn't it? But for 1,700 experience points, I'm A-OK -okay with that. So, three and two. We do have the Stone Skin. We now have the Cold Ray for 140 points of damage. That's going to help a lot. I'm very well aware that there are these other troops here. Um... Because I'm going to be doing half damage to the griffins and to the gargoyles, I think that we are going to cold ray the griffins. 
We hope we get a little bit lucky with our Arc Magi and try and kill one whole stack. It's going to be very close, by the way. It's going to be very close whether we can kill all nine of these centaurs. And then my two Magi are going to try and take out one full stack of these centaurs. If they can get unencumbered. Oh, five left, two to three. Mm, doesn't look like, does not look like it will happen. Yeah, will not happen. Oh well. Ouch. Okay. Um, and actually, I think that that opens me up. The rocks can do the exact same thing. Because we attack one centaur, they retaliate. Oh no, because the rocks already retaliated once. Um, that could have been better for me. Could have been better. My magi are going to get to go, I believe, before their griffins next turn. Four speed, five speed. Yep. So let's actually, instead of attacking the griffins, let's attack the one gargoyle with one hit point. No, the boars will take out the gargoyle. Let's put our money where our mouth is and do this. Knowing that we will have another 140 points of damage that we can just pour onto the enemy if necessary. Two to three. Yeah. Okay. That worked out much better. We're not even going to have to use another spell. And we will take minimal losses. Four and two. I do consider that to be minimal losses. Uh, Expert Eagle Eye or Mysticism. The problem with Expert Eagle Eye, I haven't talked about this in a minute. Why is, why is Expert Eagle Eye so bad? Well, if you have Expert Eagle Eye, you have a 40% chance to learn a fourth level spell. Or below. If it was a 40% chance to learn a fifth level spell, Eagle Eye would be tre tremendous. But as it stands... I'm pretty sure that only with a 40% chance, not even a guaranteed chance to get a fourth level spell, you're feeling a little bit sad about that. Um, is it better or worse than the mysticism though? Uh, right now, it's definitely better because we have a well here. We have these towns. I'm going, I'm going to take the eagle eye, but eh, I don't, I don't love that choice. Green player has been vanquished. So we, we vanquished red. We vanquished green. Oh no, look at this. Oh no, look at this. We are about to be in a really bad way. We are about to be in a bad way. Let's let's get this big swap going here. Let's purchase all these troops. Let's move them into the Wilfrey here. You know, I I don't think we can get here and then get back, can we? Oh, we can. And the reason I was checking is because if Wilfrey has time. If, if it's going to take two turns to get to here for Marini anyway, I might as well, I think, just go and get the Freeman's Foundry and get Steel Golems. Because I can't... Because I can't, I'm going to send all the troops over, minus the Golems. I will get them upgraded, and then Marini is going to go do this handoff here, but not land. Flint will pick up these troops. Oh, and the artifact. And then head towards Halon so that we can be very concerned about these stone liths. If the enemy comes busting through here, maybe I want to meet them. Hilburn, I can beat. Who this hero is, I don't know. And that'll be tough to say. But if I see them, but they don't see me, that might be some tactical advantage that I have. Uh, I was correct, by the way. This town is not very well upgraded. I'm going to stop in just because I for sure want the haste. But because Marini has now dropped her troops off, she can head back and get these other troops from Kalindra. Wow, two actually. Two fire elemental spots here. Identify hero. What an amazing spell to pick up in a Shrine of the Third Circle. Because this identify hero, I can cast it here on my secondary hero. And I can look at exactly what I'm dealing with with Lord Kilburn or Luna. So level three, level two. 15. It won't tell me what uh, units are in the castle. And that is actually, I just realized, another excellent reason to keep your fastest creatures in your hero and your slow creatures in the garrison. If the creatures are not on your hero, I cannot tell you how many troops there are here in this castle. Because identify hero identifies the hero. It does not identify the castle. Very, very interesting. Okay. And then, I don't know, 24... Out of 40 hit points, I... I don't know. Do I waste 
462 movement points. I think I'm probably going to fight these war trolls and try and surprise these enemies. I think I will. I think I will. If they come through the stone list, though, they might be the ones to have to fight these war trolls. And if they don't have an observation tower in here, they may not know where these stone lists go. I don't know how cautious the enemy is when they are looking to go through stone lists. Maybe they're very cautious. And maybe they're not. I don't know. What I do know is I need this gem mine. That'll be Flint's job as soon as possible. More so than the sawmill. Picking up these other things are going to be good. But only after he does this handoff here. Okay. Um, how much should I upgrade these warlock castles with four sulfur and knowing that my gems are spoken for? I think you have to make a decision. I don't think you can upgrade four castles all at once. I think that I'm going to focus on the wizards and not the warlocks just because my wizard castle feels a little bit more safe knowing that there's not stone lists here. I will see enemies traveling by boat and heading my way before anything else happens. Lith's here. Lith's here. Let's see what happens over here, and then let's let's figure out what to do next. Interesting that she's not getting into the boat. When I say she, I mean Luna. All these troops head over. Uh, 55 halflings are better than the two magi. So. Oh, what? Oh, okay, gotcha. If you, if you click on a stack and then you right-click, apparently it will just do this little move move for you it'll do the split and when you only have two troops it's like well what else are you gonna do buddy of course you're gonna split them interesting i'm just doing left click right click there hm, i didn't know that was a thing that's that's exciting actually <laughs> um yeah this could be five gems in this magic garden will flint have time to get over here and get the magic garden i don't think so let's have halon go a little bit out of his way or five gems and it is out of his way because that's a lot of swamp penalty he just took a lot of swamp penalty uh, we do finally have the golems upgraded and we will trade on this way Wilfrey is now officially hanging out until it's his time to shine once again okay we know that there's no purchases to make because we don't have gems. We don't have that other stuff. Oh, there it goes. That was my wonder. That was exactly what I was wondering. Because they haven't attacked me, I'm guessing that Charity, as a level 4 hero, does not think she can beat my level 9 Halon. One Bone Dragon. Yeah, I can definitely defeat her. One Bone Dragon. I was worried that would be many. Four Spell Power, five Knowledge. She's got spells, but no offensive... Or defensive capabilities i don't either but i think that we roll through this way we go here here and there and flint the wizard just looks at these enemies and says oh boy i'm glad i'm not you and let's pick up the hut of the magi you enter a rickety hut and talk to the magician who lives there he tells you of places near and far which may aid you in your journeys oh okay so that's that is interesting because this makes me think that this is just one big land mass Desert here, desert here. This is probably one big landmass, and that's probably where these necromancy troops came from. So we know now where to go for Halon. Halon needs to go north immediately after he defeats Charity, which is weird because I was thinking to myself, "Oh, am I going? Am I going to take these sorceresses?" Luna hasn't gotten in the boat. She's she's never made herself a presence on the high seas. If she doesn't want to fight me, then I will be okay to leave her alone for now. And I'm okay with that. Um, worth noting, I've mentioned always, check your corners. I would love to go out of my way to check my corners. I need... I, Marini has a job. She is fully spoken for. She does not have time to slow down. Okay. Uh, we've wasted enough time. We're good here, good here. And then Halon is going to fight these fights. Um, the losses look good. I figured that they could have been worse, actually. And the reason why is because I'm worried that there are some nasty spells that the enemy has. This looks like they probably don't actually have some nasty spells. 150 damage or 140 damage on the Cold Ray is actually bad because I'm 10 damage away from defeating one whole Bone Dragon. But it's good in that these Liches and these Power Liches are going to go down pretty easily. So I can kill five or three. I will kill five Liches. I'm not going to worry about the nomads too much. And will I kill one bone dragon here? It looks like I will not. 
Nomads are probably not, well, they're not going to get good morale because they have poor morale, so they cannot get good morale. One to two or most of the bone dragons stack. My rocks are actually going to get to go before the bone dragons do. So let's attack the bone dragons and just plan on the cursed rocks attacking the bone dragons. Let's plan on that. I don't know what to do with these nomads. I'll kill two to three and then they're going to hit me back pretty hard. How much do I want to keep the boars alive? Rocks are going to go right here. I think that we can use the boars here and just take two losses. Oh, four boars. A little bit worse than I was hoping for. One Arc Magi does go down. We need to do 46 damage. We sure can. We end up doing 60. And that's enough. I did not anticipate that with the rocks, but we do um, clean up those skeletons with that good luck. I always feel so bad to know that you are cursed and then you got good luck. Because you just, you know you're missing out on so much damage. You just know it. Uh, the enemy should have run before. They did not. Our magic arrow is going to cost us three hit points and do 70 damage. It doesn't matter which enemy I magic arrow. They are not going to get the chance to run. So one arc magi, four boars, one rock. The spells ended up saving us a lot of uh, troops. One knowledge, one spell power here for the white pearl. Endless pouch of crystal. Evil Eye, so curse, curse spells are halved. Pendant of Free Will, Hypnotize spells don't even matter. And we picked up Curse. Hey, look at that Eagle Eye coming in clutch. We do still have some slots left over. I don't think the Kilburn has any artifacts. I would love it if the Identify Hero spell actually was able to let you see if the enemy had artifacts or not. I think that would be amazing. Um, and just so we're clear, totally not a quality of life buff that is necessary. That spell is already powerful enough on its own. I don't think you need to make it even better. It's a glorious victory. The enemy does not run. And now we are going to take our ballistics and we're going to go right on through. Why ballistics? Well, for a wizard or a warlock army, it's not that big of a deal because you're going to have ranged troops. You're going to have flyers. It's not that big of a deal. And yet I'm going to take that over the diplomacy. So um, I do have some additional fights coming up is really the thing. Observation tower here. Lots to do. Lots to do. Crag hack is probably not a pushover. One of these castles has bone dragons in it. And this is this is my thought process. Follow me on this. The defenders are liches and royal mummies. Okay. Defenders are only skeletons. Okay. One of these castles has bone dragons. We've also seen power liches on the battlefield. I'm guessing that the AI would upgrade its one castle to be its best castle. And because there's liches here and not power liches here, I'm guessing that the bone dragons and the power liches are in Ross Common instead of Hilltop. Is that good deductive logic or is that bad? Eh. I mean, when you have a 50-50 shot, anything you can do to maybe Hope things go better for you is probably a good idea. Um, there's no guarantees that I'm correct, but uh, I'm, I'm, I can only get one before day one. And even so, it's going to be. That's going to be a little bit close. Day five. Yeah, it'll be a little bit close, but we'll get there. We will get there. Um, I'm starting to worry that we're going to get backdoored by our dear friend Le uh, Luna. If Luna decides to hop in the boat, we're going to be in a little bit of trouble. And I'm wondering if she's going to look at Marini and say, oh, that's a little bit of a tough hero. I don't want to deal with you. Or if she'll be okay with it. I, I don't know the answer is really the problem. Six iron golems. Perhaps I should have waited to move the steel golems over. I say perhaps, but that's pretty clearly what I should have done. I think that I, I keep the iron golems here and we'll just do that better next time. Yes, that's what we will do. So Marina's heading back. It's day five. So day six and then wait one day and then get additional troops. I think that's what we're going to do there. Okay, so 
No, nothing to do here, nothing to do here. Finally, we have our gems. Is it possible to get a cloud castle before the beginning of this new week? Hmm. Takes wood and ore and gems. We would need six, seven. So we're going to have nine gems. We're, we're going to need to get 11 gems and still have some wood and ore left over. Likelihood is incredibly low. And part of the reason why the wood matters is because I would have to get, let's see. Oh, just one marketplace? I can get one marketplace. That'll give me four marketplaces. Yeah, I've got four marketplaces now. And plenty of wood left over. I think that picking up these five gems in this magic garden is giving myself an opportunity. I will check on day seven, but we will wait and see what Luna does. I'm still worried that Luna's going to hop in the boat. Still very worried. She does not. What is she doing? Aha! Bone dragons. Perfect. Ha <laughs> ha. I feel good about that. I don't have time to go out of my way to get the fountain. Knowing that I am at half spell points, I do have time to get this magic well, especially since it's not going to take me too far out of my way. But it will take me one additional day. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to get there day one instead of day seven. Wait. Yeah, next turn I'll get to here, day seven, and then day one. Okay. Not great, but it'll work. Marini's waiting, waiting. Sulfur. This campfire might have been important, and I didn't know it at the time. Every time she walks by that boat, I am terrified. Pyramid might be good. Pyramid might end up being important for us. We're not going to know until we try it, and then I will risk the bad luck. I truly will. Um, we're, we're getting out and about, though. This is not feeling bad at all. I am okay with all this. Feels like we've got a good foothold on this map. And I haven't seen... I mean, there's still this Dragon City over here. We kind of didn't talk about that. That could be... wonderful. How many enemies are there here, actually? Hold on. Okay, so we haven't seen purple at all, but we still have purple. Looks like they are... They have one castle. Probably just one castle. Yeah, one castle, because yellow it looks like hell will have two castles. I've got the most with four. So purple is going to be somewhere in the unexplored area. We'll have to see what we do to deal with them in just a little bit. Uh, but stay seven. No other purchases to... Oh, that was close. No other purchases to make. Six Fox, how could you? How could you? Is it possible? We could trade a lot of gold. <laughs> I mean, we could get we could get it just in gold, but then we are not going to have enough gold left over. We can trade six gems. We can get can we get five gems from everything else? If we do that, then we're going to have enough gold left over to still get the Cloud Castle, but you will be absolutely bankrupt. Keep that in mind. So, is it possible to get five? Oh yeah, easy. Okay, so we're going to get the Cloud Castle, for sure. We're going to trade most of the ore. We're going to trade a little bit of the mercury. We're not going to trade any of the sulfur, though. Uh, Yeah, we have enough sawmills. I'll trade a little bit of wood here. Oh, that's nifty. I can right click here and it'll show me my kingdom income. Very nice. But I'm, I'm trying to save some resources just in case we start thinking about, well, other things like mage guilds. Um, it's five and five. Five wood, five ore. I, I, I think I'd rather save the gold. We're still going to have enough ore here. We're not going to have enough wood there if we trade. But I do have an alchemist lab. I've got more crystal than I have mercury. I've got two crystal mines. Well, one crystal mine and then that pouch of gems. So we're going to do it like this. Um, we're going to end up trying to save as much gold as we can. 
one and two. We pick up the Cloud Castle, day seven. So that is uh, month one, week three, day seven. We pick up a Cloud Castle here. Giants, pretty crappy unit on their own. I kind of hate Giants a little bit, but, but if I can get them into Titans, then we're feeling okay. Um, and we actually, pretty soon, we're probably going to have more marketplaces and our ability to trade will be even better. So getting the Giants now is not too bad. The enemy is just hunkering down. They are not moving. They are not moving. I'm going to take this castle, I'm going to leave the Bone Dragons, and then I am going to get this Pyramid. If the Pyramid's great, wonderful. If it's not, oh well. Um, I'll, I'll take the terrible luck if the enemy has already cleared that out. Okay, and no problems here, but they are, there are three Bone Dragons that they purchased. That means that there's probably three more Bone Dragons waiting in the wings. One, one, these single stacks are a little bit... Meh, a little bit sad to see. We've gotten additional spell power since we were here last. We can now kill one whole bone dragon with a cold ray. I think that we do that. I do. One whole bone dragon seems like a good decision here. And then damage onto the liches. If I put a little bit of damage onto the liches, then the rocks should be able to help things go right. Unless the rocks get obliterated. Bone dragons go here. I actually like that decision from them because then the steel golems are going to well the steel golems were going to get the hit anyway but yeah I'm, I'm perfectly fine with everything that just transpired there that was probably still their best spell but it suits me just fine steel golems making this attack here taking their retaliation just fine just fine even though the bone dragons get to go first now um, all that really afforded them was to cast this curse which does not hurt my feelings too badly. With a cold ray. Cold ray is overkill. We can kill one here. Skip. And then the last skeleton goes down here. One, one, and four. I think that that was better. I think. Huh. Very interesting. This necromancer town feels so empty. How did you get bone dragons, but you didn't get vampires or your pyramid that's crazy hold on interesting you can get i i had i i i'd never really conceptualized that that if you wanted to sprint towards bone dragons you could get the excavation site you could get i'm guessing it takes the mage guild to get the mausoleum and then probably the graveyard yeah yeah, and then because the laboratory only requires the mausoleum, so you can ignore the vampires and the hmm, and the mummies. That's interesting, and that actually changes kind of how I think about necromancers as a faction. If you have enough resources, is really the thing, because the laboratory is a very expensive building. When we're looking at the kind of cost comparison, it doesn't take so many of one resource, like 20 gems or 20 sulfur, but it takes a little bit of everything. And that can sometimes be a little bit of a challenge to get. So, interesting. Uh, I'm not worried about any of these heroes, but Craghack is yellow's toughest. Nothing new here. No good spells. And so we will carry on. And what Craghack does, I don't think he's going to do enough to beat me. I think that with my spells, I will always defeat Craghack, even with his high attack. Okay. Uh, Flint. Five more gems. Great. We're not going to need to trade for any more gems. Not for the moment. And that speeds things up considerably for us. Uh, it's going to be here. We're going to purchase everybody but the giants. Because to upgrade giants to titans, it is one of the most expensive things possible. Any troop is going to be expensive to upgrade like that because it's double the cost of the difference in the upgrade. So for example, the difference between Magi and Arc Magi, 700 gold, 600 gold, it's going to be 100 gold difference between the base level Magi and the Arc Magi. And so then it is double that difference in cost to upgrade them. So 100 gold up to 200 gold for the upgrade. And when you're talking about a 2000 gold giant up to a 5000 gold Titan, yeah, not worth it paying 6000 gold to upgrade a giant into a titan. Ugh. 
say it ain't so. Uh, oh, we're gonna do this split here. Yep, there's the upgrade that we were just talking about. But we got plenty of movement points. And then I do want Marini... I do want Marini to potentially go right here? And just resupply here. That'll make things much easier for Halon. We're even going to have enough gold that we can purchase another hero here. It'll be Mandigal. Sure, why not? And Mandigal will help facilitate this trade just so that way Halon doesn't have to go into the desert out of his way. Okay, and let's carry on. Crag Hack is looking angry. Or he's looking at Mandigal like he's a snack. I'm not sure which is more accurate here. So Marini will go to here. Mandigal to here. And to here. Oh, and we will leave the one halfling actually here. Now is a good time to get some of these useless artifacts off. I don't think that the bless is going to need to be half cost. I think I can get rid of the gems and the gold. I will do my best to keep Mandigal alive. Everything else... Everything else can stay. One, two, three, four, five, six slots. That should be plenty. And I'm actually going to have Mandigal go back to Marini and trade over these artifacts. Let her carry it, because I just trust her to stay alive more than I trust Mandigal. Alright. And then Halon's not going to have any problem with Crag Hack. Yeah. Glorious victory. One rock, 12 halflings. I think that we accept these losses. I think that's just fine. We will take the ballistics here, and then we will visit the pyramid. It's weird that that is the quickest way. That is the quickest way, but that's very strange. Uh, let's do it. Uh, you come upon the pyramid of a great and ancient king. You are tempted to search it for treasure, but all the old stories warn of fearful curses and undead guardians. Will you search? Yes, I will. It's a glorious victory. We're going to fight this even better, though. But the fact that we have to fight guardians means that we are going to get a wonderful fifth level spell. Hoot hoot. The Vampire Lords are going to get here very, very quickly, and when they get here, they're going to do a ton of damage. I like to do one full stack of vampires at a time. How many hit points are left on these vampires? That's going to be 220. So we can try and kill the whole stack without feeling bad about potential losses. Vampire Lords are going to try and bother the halflings. They're probably going to do a very good job of that, actually. Oh, and I would much rather take the damage onto the rocks. That's that's very nice. Let's do that. And then the Steel Golem's taking the retaliation here. Feels A-OK. -okay. Even the halflings, even the halflings are saying, please don't cause us any grief here. Uh, the boars are going to get to go before anybody else. And one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, this stack of royal mummies is not going to be able to get to the magi so boars are going to go down finish off the stack of vampires and then we will have one more round of combat and spells to deal with these royal mummies before anything else happens i think i even attack here yeah i will kill three to six and take the retaliation maybe lose one more rock i do not even lose one more rock i do not um one thing that by the way in that most recent video about the tier lists um I, I mentioned that I want people to make an argument for why uh, I might have made a mistake on that tier ranking list. And there's one that I want to give a shout out to. Oh, and I feel so bad. I feel so bad. Who was it who made that shout out? Who who made the argument? I'm going to take just one second. I'm, I'm going to find out who this is. Town Portal. I wish I could use it. It's a fifth level spell that I don't use. I don't use Dimension Door and I don't use Town Portal. I use Dimension Door if the enemy uses it. But anyway, um, let me find out real quickly. Who was that? Who made who made this distinction? Because they made a very, very good argument for why the Royal Mummy is actually better than the Veteran Pikeman. And I agree with them. I, I definitely agree with their with their feeling on that. Let me just find out who that person was. Oh, mildly deranged. 
Uh, in your consideration of veteran pikemen versus royal mummies, you forgot about the mummy's curse ability, which greatly increases their durability by reducing the amount of damage, uh, the amount of return damage they take. Combined with their higher hit points, mummies will keep their numbers up longer than the pikemen, who will start off with a higher stack but will die faster, and thus damage will drop off quicker. I agree with that 100%. That was an excellent argument. That was very well done, and I am, am with you 100%. You have absolutely convinced me. Well done. I did not consider... Um, I think I don't even think I mentioned it when I was talking about the mummies and the royal mummies with their ability to curse. Um, I I mean I have it in my mind. I know that the mummies curse, but I, I definitely didn't talk about it there. And I know that I did not consider that when deciding who was better. The reason why I chose the veteran pikeman at the time was because of the growth stat. You get one more veteran pikeman, and then because the damage is the same or similar, I figured well if you have one more pikeman, then that extra three to four damage is going to stick around longer. But because the durability is going to be affected by the curse. I agree that keeping the troops on the battlefield for longer is going to make them the more valuable unit. So I will, in fact, at some point, uh, for now, keep in my mind that the Royal Mummies are, in my opinion, the better unit than the veteran pikemen. Okay, so thank you so very, very much. And thank you for everyone that, that took the time uh, and has taken the time thus far to uh, make some comments and um, help, help that go well. Um, so, and really, I, I gotta tell you, and, and maybe I should have started with this, but um, I'm, I'm pretty humbled. We just hit 200 subscribers. And when I think about subscribers, I, I, I think about it in these terms. Every single subscriber is a person. Every, sing, every single subscriber is a person that has taken the time to click a button that says, yeah, I like what you're doing. I'm interested in what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. And that, I can't tell you how much that helps me keep going. It keeps me going to get that feedback from people. Um, I'm not here on my video saying like and subscribe. It supports the channel. It really helps out. I don't hate people that do that. They're trying to, you know, take their hobby in that direction um, where they're really trying to reach a lot of people. And the more subscribers, the more likes, the more comments you get, the wider audience that you will get with your videos. Um, I don't feel like I need to to request that you subscribe or like, but I, but it does help me take the time to go out of my way to make sure that I'm, I'm doing these videos. Um, so every single person that is subscribed, I sincerely appreciate you. If you're one of the 200 people that have subscribed, thank you so much. I'm grateful for your time. I'm grateful uh, that you find these videos interesting. And I'm grateful that we have this wonderful game that we can kind of come together on and enjoy together uh, because I truly enjoy Heroes Might and Magic too. I truly do, and and I'm grateful uh, to get to be here and spend some time with you. So thank you so much for all the engagement and all the uh, the good conversation and the good insights. And actually, uh, and I'd be remiss if I didn't say this, very special shout out to uh, Zents. Uh, Zents. Zents is one of the F Heroes 2 team members, and he was probably one of the very, very first people to comment on any of my videos, and he has been very consistent. Uh, there through the ups and the downs and and always a good source of reason and feedback zents i'm looking at you right here down the camera thank you so very very much for everything that you do um you have kept me going it would have been really easy for me to get through the roland and the archibald campaigns and just stop there uh, but but you helped me kind of continue through some of those of those early growing pains uh because of the support and because of that i'm going to keep on doing this and so thank you i appreciate that very very much very, very much. Um, oh, darn. <laughs> we lost Marini, and that's so bad. What happened? I, I, I sailed right too close to the coast, um, and just because you can trade with the heroes on the beach, uh, that also necessitates that enemies on the beach can attack you in the boat, and that's what happened. Uh, that's bad. Marini was worth 1,250 gold a day, 750 gold and 500 gold a day with those two artifacts. Yikes. That changes my plans. I'm going to have to go get Luna ASAP. And it's also bad because that's another hero that had a boat. Marini was my main boat hero. And so Luna is officially on my list. She has my attention. And no matter what else happens, that was probably where I was going to go next. It's definitely where I'm going to go next now. That was probably the worst thing that she could have done to keep herself alive and now she's gonna die yeah 
Oh yeah, it's happening. Alrighty. The damage here, wow, that's actually a little bit of damage. This looks like it's going to be a fairly well upgraded castle. Left turret, right turret. It's a fairly well upgraded castle. Not too bad. We're going to see if we can kill all these orcs. We'll take the retaliation from the goblins and end the battle just that quickly. And I think that this is going to end yellow. Will it? Yellow player's been vanquished. So we are just knocking people off one by one. Red, green, yellow. And with all these castles, there's, I mean, there's no way that we can really be hurting too bad. Can we? I, I think that we're going to be just fine. So, um, Flint and Mandigal are now left to their own devices to just clean up all this extra stuff. Um, and they're going to do an excellent job of that. By the way, we did pick up Charity. She has the basic estates. We did defeat her previously. Mostly, it, it's hard to ignore getting a hero that comes with estates because they're going to pay for themselves. Uh, just 25 turns later, she's going to be a free hero and she will help me get some of these other opportunities on the high seas. So happy to get her now. Um, we are going to make landfall here with Titans. There's no doubt in my mind. We will drop in with Titans. And when we do, I think that our sorcerer's friends are going to immediately be uh, very, very well aware of how much they are overmatched. I'm not going to go out of my way to get these earth elementals. I've, I'm just rolling. I've got too much good stuff going on. I don't have time to waste. I do have time to go out of my way to get my fountain for the good luck and to get this magic well. But even that is going to cost me one additional day. Wow. It's, it's just costing me everywhere and I feel so bad. It feels so bad when you're, when you're almost perfect and you just fall short and the logistics don't quite work out um when they when they do work out nobody notices oh it worked out just fine no problem uh and and nobody notices when things go right people notice when things go wrong i notice when things go wrong and that's probably a change that i should make to take things in stride and just know that hey that's part of the cost of doing business Sometimes there's easy wins and sometimes there are losses. There are gems here. I uh, let's see, lots of nomads. With an additional week's worth of creatures, we can definitely beat them. Or we can maybe trade for one Titan, and one Titan will definitely beat lots of nomads. That's probably what we're going to do. Probably going to try and just get one Titan, I think. I think. Wait, what'd that say? A drink at the Oasis is refreshing. Oh, but offers no further benefit. The Oasis might help again if you fought a battle first. Uh, for some reason, I thought that maybe it was because we just had skeletons and zombies, but no, um, we had already visited that Oasis. Okay. Month one, week four, and still Luna does not go into the boat. Luna not going into the boat has been the best thing that could have happened for me. It's It's been the difference between having a real nice time and having a real rough day. I'm just checking to see if I've got all my marketplaces. I do. We're going to trade at a tremendous clip here. I want Wilfrey to set off and then he can get more gems and then we can get Titans in mass. So it's going to cost me some resources to upgrade five and five again. It's going to cost me some resources to upgrade early, but I'm going to be all for it. So here, and here, and then I do want one more gem, so, just so I can upgrade and then get two Titans. So we have Titans now available, we're going to buy two, we're going to send two south with Wilfrey, and that's going to help us get these additional gems behind these nomads, and then we should be able to do a drive-by pick up troops, and off we go. That's the plan anyway. Uh, we're going to actually have Flint. Will it be Flint? Flint's going to go right here, so that way maybe we don't even land. Maybe we just need a couple of Titans to break Luna's spirit. And then we can 
carry on. It's day seven. It's not. We're not gonna be able to, able to get there before the new week, but we should do okay. So, uh, let's go here. Oh my goodness! Month of the plague. So all populations are halved, and we don't get additional growth. So we had, we had four titans in there. I don't know if we're going to have one titan now, or if we're going to have two. I don't know if you round up or if you round down. Let's find out. We round down, so we have one titan available. Um, oh well, these things do happen. These things do happen. So I'm very sad for it, but that actually means that I don't need to go out of my way to get these hordes of nomads. We're going to go here, pick up this other titan. We will pick up, well, there's no other troops to pick up. And then, uh-oh, oh darn. Uh, and then we'll figure out what the logistics look like in just a second. Charity's probably just going to stay put. She doesn't really have anything else to do. Uh, Flint is going to be ready to pick up these troops and then drop them off. And then Halon's going to land right now. If I could land right in front of Luna, I would. I cannot. Um, I'm not scared of these troops. Without Phoenixes, I'm just truly not scared. And even if worst comes to worst, we don't have to keep Halon. We can always retreat. We can surrender. And then... Have another crack at it another day. I do not think that that will be necessary, though. So, uh, end of a new day. Yeah, even now, the enemy is not wanting to go out of their way to attack me. So, I think that that is very, very fine for me. And then we can move troops this way. Yep, just like this. And I'll just save one additional movement point that we don't have to go that way for. Uh, I think we take three Titans over the Halflings. I like the Halflings, but I like all these other troops as well. The Titans sh should take up tons of attention. With only one attack, two defense, though, we're a little bit weak. They're good troops to have, but they're not very well backed up. Oh, look at this. The enemy has surrendered. Their cowardice cost them 1,000 gold, so they are able to surrender out of this castle. They are going to take some tremendous losses, but so are we. Um, this is fine, but that means that there's going to be another sorceress castle somewhere else, and they are trying to get to that castle. How the resupply will look there, I don't know. Is this the weak castle? Is this the castle that does not have phoenixes? And is there another castle that does? Have I landed myself into a trap? I'm not sure. With some spells, though, I think that this fight can go a little bit better. So let's just check. We do get to go first. Six speed, six speed. The sprites with their no retaliation are going to be a little bit of a deal. And then, of course, 50 dwarves, a great garrison unit. 180 damage on a cold ray. Is there another spell that would be better for me? I could potentially haste the rocks and send them over. And if they do that... I mean, is it going to be better than just killing seven druids? I think so. Getting the rocks over here, because if, okay. If I attack the greater druids with my Arc Magi, and then the rocks jam up these grand elves, then we will mitigate the most possible damage at the cost of putting the rocks into harm's way. Everybody's at harm's way here anyway. Like this is, this is a pretty big fight. I think that we potentially get rid of the rocks, knowing that we might end up getting a red tower fairly quickly. And I say get rid of, I don't want to get rid of them, but we will deal with them as best we can. We will see what the enemy does here. A slow to counteract the dispel, is, or a, a slow to counteract the haste is a good spell. I think that was a great decision on their part. 183 hit points left on these titans. We're going to kill the stack that is able to do full damage to. This wall is preventing me from doing some other damage here. They did end up doing a lot of damage to these Arc Magi. From here on out, I think that we just do offensive spells, by the way. I don't think that we waste our time with these rocks doing anything else. I wonder if you are slowed. Can the rocks still fly over this barrier? I don't know. I do not know. I think I'm going to consider hasting the Titans. If I haste the Titans, then they're going to get to go before the Grand Elves. If I just cold the Ray of the Grand Elves, we're going to kill 12 Grand Elves, which is better. How much damage did the Titans do before? Luna cast slow, Greater Druids. 
Move boars. Titans do 266 damage. Oh yeah, Titans are going to do more damage. And then they're going to be faster, and that might soak up another spell from Luna. I think that that's what we're going to do. We're going to haste the Titans, and we're going to try and mitigate damage by just doing more damage. And then that might soak up some attention from the enemies later. And then my six speed creatures hopefully will get to go first more of the time. Okay, so there goes one Titan. We knew that was going to happen. We hoped it wouldn't, but it was fairly certain. And the rocks cannot fly over this battlement. It doesn't mean that they can't for sure. It's just that they definitely can't when they're slowed. They just can't move far enough. And they are, as a two hex creature, cannot get their big Gluteus Maximuses over the wall. Now, do I Cold Ray? I don't think I Stone Skin. I don't think I... If I was going to cure, I would have cured last time. It. I don't think I... 45 hit points won't really move the needle in that way. Greater Druids versus the Blessed Grand Elves. We're going to kill 6 to 9. I think that you have to take out the stack of creatures that is already blessed. And they're probably going to bless these Greater Druids. I would. But I think, I don't know, now do I attack the Greater Druids? I think I do, just assuming that because I'm doing full damage to them and that they're probably going to catch a Bless now, I think that I do that. Yep, and I feel pretty good about that decision. I can maybe get good luck here and dispel that Bless. I do not. The Boars are taking a lot of attention, I think mostly because they are the most threatening creature because they are now breaching the walls here. Kind of shocked that the sprites did that a little bit shocked that decision I don't love it works but I don't love it anyway um, okay this slow has been really annoying by the way at this point I'm really starting to think about this look Luna has been a good hero for them I don't want to see her ever again I do not do not how do I fight this fight so that she does not run I can kill 12, I can kill 13, I can kill 6 to 8 here. I don't want to cast spells on the dwarves or the battle dwarves. I think I kill 7 here. I think I can kill 3 to 4 here. We need to kill full stacks of creatures, and I want to kill their fastest creatures first. The boars might be able to kill 2 greater druids if I'm able to bring the stack size down to two i'm not able to i can kill all three now or i can mitigate further damage still mitigating damage is still going to be useful 50 dwarves it's 50 dwarves there's no way you're going to kill 50 dwarves in one go around with just what you have here it's too early to think about mitigating damage you still need to or, or or keeping the enemy from running it's too early to think about that you still need to just fight the fight and let it shake out where it will i think um, I don't want these rocks to deal with these dwarves. We're actually going to back off because I'm so slow. I'm just going to back off. I've still got so many cold rays. There's most of the grand elves. Maybe I start trying to bring down these dwarves. And let the rest of my creatures just focus where they can. Trying to kill full stacks. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, we are down to just these 39 dwarves. That's a lot of hit points, though. Unless we get very lucky again and again and again. No, we're killing two to three. We're doing half damage just because of where they're placed. I don't think we're going to be able to prevent them from running. We will do our best, but I don't think we're going to be able to prevent them from running. 16... Uh, let's see. Five to seven. If this spell goes through, I think I win this fight and they don't get to run. They have a 25% chance to reduce this spell and just completely ignore all this damage. We're going to do it, but it feels so bad. <laughs> And it's weird because I have a three and four chance that this goes well. And yet, 
I'm not confident. I can't even tell you why, but if I was the computer and if I had any amount of cheating in my bones, I think this would be a time where I'm like, mm, no, I'm not going to lose this fight. Awesome. Okay, great. And, and three dwarves left that we can kill. So we turned a, a, a loss with the, I think, I think about the same losses as we had before. Two more arc magi. I think, I think we went from nine to 11 lost and then, and then tons of boars. Everything else was pretty much the same, but this time the enemy does not run. That is massive. That is massive. And assuming that there is another sorceress castle here on this little archipelago, this little island, not having to deal with all these ranged troops again will be excellent. So plus two to spell power. There's our bag of gold, our purse of gold, our pouch of crystal, our snake ring. And we learned bless because of our eagle eye. We will take the logistics here. And I don't think that I need to worry about another enemy hero. We still have the two titans, right? Two titans is still going to be excellent. There is nothing here. They didn't even really clear out this, this area. What was Luna doing? Hmm. That looks a little off to me. Not sure what happened there with Luna. Uh, there's no logistics to make because there's no troops to purchase. So let's just take our enemy here. One steel golem goes down and then the orange players now vanquish. So we just have one more enemy left, I think. Here it is. Yeah, Sarah can the wizard. And I think that we decided that he only has one castle. Uh, we don't know anything about his army or his army strength. There's a little Karakston here, a little night town. Um, I'm going to assume I'm going to assume that that enemy is stupid tough. I'm going to assume that it's a trap and that you want to be armed to the teeth to fight him and that he's not just going to be another pushover because the fact of the matter is, is that everybody else had two castles and we've determined that purple probably only has one. And so I'm going to assume that they started off with some nasty troops. What those are, I couldn't even tell you, but I'm just going to assume and then hope for the best. Let's have everybody else go around. Uh, we will, yeah, we'll clear out all this, pick up the tree of knowledge, especially, and then Halon will go back. We'll, we'll completely fix up this town and then head back out into the ocean. Mandigal is actually probably, well, Mandigal is going to stay here and Charity is going to pick up a boat. And she's going to hit the high seas with bone dragons. She's got one. We'll send her out with the one bone dragon. Sure. Why not? Let her ride around with her BFFs. And we actually have a boat here we could buy. Let's do that as well. I, I mentioned that I wanted to go to my corners. We're going to have some heroes just go to the corners. Make sure there's nothing crazy over there. There's another corner here. That'll take a long time to get to, but we'll send somebody over there eventually. Okay. And then... And then I think we need to think about these red towers. We need fenced meadows, which take lots of gems. Gems are mostly spoken for. We probably would be better off just getting another cloud castle. As good as phoenixes are, more titans is probably better than a couple of phoenixes. And it'll probably take us not nearly as long as well. So extra stuff here. Zombies are dead and gone. Death wave. Hey, um, I, I read something that made me laugh and I loved it. What was it? It was a while ago. Um, it was the individual that was, uh, trying to determine, oh, there's something over there. I can't see what it is, but there's something trying to determine if you can still do a rush to beat Archibald at the end of the Roland campaign and to deal with the blind. Some, uh, someone was like, well, do you have a death ripple or a death wave? Cause then you'll, You'll take the blind off of you. And I thought that was hilarious ingenuity. I thought that was a, an excellent way of outthinking the problem and saying that there's more than one way to skin a cat or there's one more than one way to just make weird, crazy, awesome things happen. And that just tickled, tickled some part of my brain that I really enjoyed. Let me just check marketplaces. Yep, we've got all the marketplaces we need. Or all the marketplaces that we can have. I'll accept these losses. How much ex oh 
Excellent. We're going to pick up our luck here. We're going to get this artifact. During a sudden storm, a bolt of lightning strikes a tree, splitting it. Inside the tree, you find a mysterious mace. That's plus one to attack. Um, because we just hit new level, we will get this tree of knowledge and then we will go. Ten gems is a high price to pay. I've got gold. Yeah, I've got gold. I'm not too worried about it. 5,000 gold there. We will take the logistics and then we will pick up more experience here as we carry it back on our way. Oh, it's a Magellan's Maps. Interesting. Let's pick this up now. That'll actually help a lot. So there's nothing over here. Sirens, if we wanted to trade. Mermaids. Looks like there's not a lot here. Not a lot here. I guess we really should consider getting this Dragon City as soon as possible. Yeah, let's let's have Charity pick up all this and then have a boat waiting for Halon so that he can just go and defeat the Dragon City with this army. No, you need more than that. You need an extra day's worth of creatures, I think, or an extra week's worth of creatures. Yeah, I think so. But we're getting lucky here on the high seas. Uh, maybe Kalindra. Yeah, Kalindra will go up and she'll be the one to drop the boat here. And then Charity with her one bone dragon. After she picks up this Slotsam, she will head back over here and just kind of explore in this area. Uh, Flint is a little bit useless. 88 Halflings is not some sort of royal bodyguard. And then otherwise, I'm just... Yeah. I'm just trying to get logistically everything in place. Uh, first off, I gotta find purple, and then I do have Identify Hero, and so I can use that to great effect to determine what I need to do to defeat them. But again, first I need to find them. Is this Sulfur Mine flagged? It is. Oh, there's, there's Stone Liths right there. Aqua Barrier. I need to find the Aqua Barrier probably over here somewhere. Need to go out of my way. And that especially makes me think that the enemy is hiding some crazy, scary secret. <laughs> um, yeah, if the enemy is behind a barrier like that, I have no choice but to believe that that barrier is for my safety and not for theirs. <laughs> so, we're going to do the very best we can to ignore them. Um, one choice that some people might make, oh, you already have one cloud castle, why not just use that? and upgrade your giants over there. Again, the cost to upgrade giants to titans is, is exorbitant, and also uh, you break even much quicker than you think you do as far as gems and other things go. So we are going to end up getting the upgraded cloud castle there as well. It's just going to take us a little bit longer. There's a dispel magic. We got that spell already from our eagle eye. I'm going to accept the losses. I'm just kind of rolling through this map at this point. Flint could take the troops and then just go get these mummies and then drop the troops back off when he's got a second. Okay, there's things that have not been cleared out here. Good to know. Good to know. Uh, any other troops that we really want to purchase? I... Man, if, 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 there's, if there's a chance of getting dragons, like red dragons... I would love to get those. There's only one gem mine on the map. And so to, to spend 10 or 20 gems is not a small thing. I'll pick up the swamp just because hydras are such a good unit. No purchases in the necromancer castles. Fenced Meadow, it's got the same problem with the gems, you know, it's, uh, you gotta have the gems to get the Fenced Meadow, and then the Fenced Meadow lets you get the Red Tower. Gems are, are really a little bit of a bottleneck. And the best thing I can say about that is this. You have Magic Gardens that can give you five gems. So it's nice that there's an adventure map object that helps alleviate that bottleneck if you can secure it. But otherwise, gems seem to be the bottleneck, especially if you're trying to upgrade multiple castles. Phoenix growth plus five. Okay. Sounds good. I still don't think I'm going to get phoenixes anytime soon. Gold mine. That's nice. If I can get it. 
Let's go here. Lose our one halfling. And then Halon's a little bit sad because he has to go out of his way, but could have been worse. Drop the halflings again, and then let's get rid of the snake ring. Let's get rid of the pendant of free will. Let's get rid of the evil eye. I don't know how many other artifacts I'm going to find. I don't think that the sailor's astrolobe is really going to help me anymore. We're for sure going to get rid of the gold generating items. Oh, and because we have this many slots, I don't think we're going to find this many f slots before we end up fighting our final hero, our final enemy. I'm not going to accept losing an Arc Magi. Again, when we have spells, there's it's just not necessary. Death Wave? No. Mm -mm. Oof. Oof. I think if I hit Q right now, that the battle might end favorably for me without me lifting a finger. No guarantees, especially when I'm doing silly choices like that, but possible. I want this to go there, and then these steel golems will defeat these cavalries here. Glad that the cavalries chose not to attack my Arc Magi. I'd rather keep the Arc Magi alive. And then... Oh, I'm just going to hit Q and let the battle end. Yeah, seven boars, one steel golem. Much better. Gems here, though. That's five. Some experience. This masthead will be nice. I don't know. There's some there's some opportunities if if I can take them. I'll spend the gold to get Marini. Hey, nice to see you. Sorry about what happened last time. And now her job is just to get gems. She went from a very wonderful scary hero down to just that. Um masthead boosts troops luck and morale in sea combat. I don't think that's going to be necessary, but Okay. And then Kalindra needs to land so Halon can get into the boat. Okay. These logistics don't always feel very interesting to me. I mean, what am I what am I really doing here? I'm I'm following the path of least resistance, right? Whatever makes the most sense at the time, that's what I'm doing. I don't feel like I'm making tons of difficult decisions, really. Um, I don't feel like I'm having to use a lot of brain power to make these fights go my way. But then again, I mean, there's some choices here. I mean, you have to do this this correctly. For example, right here, if Halon just sailed and tried to take the Dragon City after a pack of Cyclops, he would get destroyed. With this army, he's getting destroyed. So we go back. And we wait for Wilfrey to do some resupply. There's a horde of nomads here. Wilfrey, what are you doing, buddy? Go be useful, please. Purchase all these troops. Send them down. I almost want to get the upgraded boundary just because I don't want to have to deal with that ever again. Um, we're going to go out of our way here, but uh, I'm going to pick up the gems. I think that'll be useful. As much as I've talked about gems being important, I think it's just a good idea to have those ready. Okay, this observation tower might be interesting. There's our awkward barrier, and we can get that without actually devoting a lot of troops. I was worried I would have to go out of my way with Halon to go and get that. It looks like not. And so any troops I have here in Quicksilver, that'll be on the way to going through the stone list and dealing with the final enemy. There's that purple sulfur mine. I'm a little scared. I'm a little bit scared. They could be terrifying. It could be very terrifying. We need at least we need at least some red dragons. We're gonna pick up the maze. We've got some gems. We we got free gems. And we're gonna get even more free gems. And we're trading it at an amazing clip. Don't cheap out now. I wanna have two dragon towers before the end of this week. That's a that's a tall order, that's a big ask. We're going to do it anyway. We are definitely not going to lose these troops. Wow, we might lose these troops. Wow, oh my word. Slow, that's actually going to be good. That means all the troops are going to go this way. I will lose halflings instead of anything else. Here. Here. 
One, two, three. You know, the... The steel golems are going to be able to get to right here. And because these are a two hex creature, they're not going to be able to get through this area with the terrain. If the halflings could run very fast that way, I would let them. They cannot, so they're just going to have to take their lumps. And that is very sad, but I don't make the rules. I just fight the fights in the way that makes the most sense. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, we will take the time to attack. Oh, I'm very glad that the Nomads decided to go to the Titans instead of anywhere else. Yeah, I'm very excited for that. Darn. Okay. And, and from here, once again, the battle is won. I guess I'm losing more rocks than I ought to, but... Okay, so 2, 1, and 18, that does look a lot better. We'll take the Pathfinding, we're going to get the gems, and we're going to come back for everything else here in a second. Yeah. Oh. Halflings, maybe? Maybe? No. Okay. Green Tower. Very costly. And then the Red Tower is going to be a little bit of a follow-up, but once we get that, then we can get Red Dragons going. Um, I loved in... Another comment, and this was from Steeson in the video about the units tier ranking. He indicated that he likes red dragons better than he likes black dragons. And some people like green dragons or red dragons more than black dragons just because of the aesthetics. And that's not that's not a bad reason to like those lower tiered dragons. Um, the argument he made was, well, first off, what are you really getting? You're getting one plus speed, you're getting 50 extra hit points, you're getting, I think, one extra attack, one extra defense. For for what? Like, the cost effectiveness of getting red dragons over black dragons on maps where the resources are limited, it's sometimes better to just stick with red dragons. If you have unlimited resources, of course you go black dragons, but otherwise, that is potentially a tactical decision where going from a four speed to a five speed is totally worth it from green to red dragons. But then the effectiveness drops off going from red to black. I thought that that was a very interesting argument, and I'm, I'm going to keep that one in my back pocket because I think that there's some good, very important uh, value to be had in that conversation. I think that I think that he's definitely on to something, which isn't not a surprise to me. If you know Steeson, Steeson uh, sleeps, lives and breathes Heroes of Might and Magic 2. And I have found him to be a very engaging and capable person, so I appreciate his insight as well. Um, here. Here, here. Oh, we got all these boats and all these heroes who are just kind of sitting here. Mandigal's doing nothing. Kalindra's gonna probably go to here and then do nothing. And then, what to do? We're going to get the red tower here in just a second anyway. Let's have Halon go to the very edge. And red dragons will get into my army very, very quickly. That's what we're going to do. If we have just enough movement points, which I think we should have enough movement points. So here, one red dragon. Probably trade out for the boar. And that's definitely an upgrade. And then how far can Wilfrey get? Cannot get to here, so this is as far as we can go. And then he'll still have just a few movement points to help these things go faster. That's an additional three titans. Massive. And then with this army, I think that Halon can defeat all these troops. Five Titans is really the the big thing there. Three attack, two defense. We're even starting to get some of that going on for us. Remember, we do still need to upgrade this Cloud Castle. I'm aware, but for now... Oh, I can even trade the resources to get that, even. No problem. And so then I might as well hire another hero who can just move the troops from here to there. It's day six, though. We're probably going to wait for one more turn. 
one more week anyway. In which case, let's do things in one big swath. Let's wait here. Wilfrey is going to be ready to pick up troops and move. Well, in that case, you might as well pick up one more red dragon. Or, th or three more red dragons. Okay. Okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. No rush. No rush. So. Three red dragons. Three more titans, and arc magi, and rocks. For now, that's all we're going to send over. And then in just a moment, Atlas will carry on some additional titans. Sweet. Okay, this is going really well. Um, I actually, I do have time to, oh no, I need the library. I'll get the library now, but I'm going to be aware that it'll be nice to just be able to move these troops over next time. As it stands, we're going to take 12 rocks with us. Okay, and then by waiting just a couple more days, we all of a sudden have 15 titans, and we're not going to take any losses. We might have taken some before, we're not going to take any now. And I'm not even worried about what my other heroes are doing. I am laser focused. I'm going to pick up this because it's going to help me in the long run. Yep, rolling right through all these enemies. Fight the dragons. I'll accept the one loss here and then we're going to pick up two red dragons from this red uh, from this dragon city. And then and then I think that because charity has now picked up this Traveler's Tent, we should be able to um, probably consider sending someone on over there uh, very soon. I don't know what the enemy is going to have. I'm guessing, though, that this far into this scenario that they're probably pretty massive. We will plan on sending a useless hero through these Liths, like Atlas. And then Atlas can figure out what's going on over here. Oh, Bone Dragons. A pack. Not worried about that at all. But Atlas is not going to be the one to defeat them. Nope. Not at all. Might as well get the Ivory Tower here, and the next time I will get the Steel Golems. Somehow Steel Golems made it into my final army. I don't hate that decision, but it's just a little bit less likely than all the other possible outcomes. Halon does not have full spell points. I guess I should have been thinking about getting additional spells. That's that's a missed opportunity, I think. Oh, oops. Yeah, well. Yeah, missed opportunity there. I totally didn't even read that artifact, and I've made it my goal to read every single artifact. What am I doing? Uncle Leo... That's a man, baby. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to defeat the Bone Dragons because that shouldn't be too big of a deal. Should I fight them? Yeah, they're worth experience. 1800 experience. I'm going to see if I can find Purple's main hero because that's not their main hero. I want to see what I can find here. If they've got a bigger, badder hero, I feel like I need to know. Halon, we've got plenty of gold. The cost to surrender is going to be much cheaper. If I really need to, I can get into the boat and get away. I may be, I may be unleashing a great evil onto the world, but for now, we're going to do what we can. I'm guessing that the final hero is over there. Let's see if he comes my way. I don't see anybody. I'm going to take the defense over the attack skill. And because I don't see anybody, I'm guessing that they didn't just see me all of a sudden pop out and decide that they wanted to beat me, so... Yep, so far nothing too bad. Serakin, oh, aha! Lots and a horde. Lots and a horde. 
Not much else backing that up, though. 3, 5, 12, and 9. 1, 1, 4, and 7. I don't think that we need to wait. I think that we can defeat... Oh, 34 Titans. 34 Titans. That's a lot of Titans. I think we are going to back off. 34 Titans is just too many. Oh, that's very nice of him. He shuffled the troops. So now I know that he's got 34 Titans and then the 62 Magi and then those boars. Uh, yeah, we're going to back off, actually. We don't actually need... We, we don't need to hurt ourselves here. It'll take us longer to overcome if we don't. Or if we... Um, It'll, it'll hurt us more if we have to surrender, if we don't beat him initially. So we're going to back off. We're going to just take one more week very, very quickly. No concerns. We've already had the month of the plague, so nothing else is going to happen. We're going to pick up Quicksilver on the way back. But otherwise, I'm just going to have Marini pick up some of these dragons. And we're going to do one more big handoff while Halon heads north to pick up some dragons in Dragon City. Maybe it'll take us one more full week before we actually defeat our, our foe. But with two castles worth of titans and dragons, I'm not worried about the way this fight is going to go. Need a little bit of sulfur. Oh, we got a little bit of sulfur. No problem. No problem. And this is probably one of those times where... Um, is what I'm doing necessary? No. There's a, there's a great chance I'm being just overly cautious, and that may not make for great viewing, for great watching. But because I'm playing these playthroughs as a one-shot, I do need to make sure that I am being very careful and cautious. Um, Especially at this point, we're a couple, we're, we're what, two hours into this video? If I ended up having to restart and fight this all over again, you would see all of it. You would see the nitty gritty. I might do a jump cut just so that way I could say, okay, we, we beat our foes up to this point again. But it, I would, I would show you every little bit of it. And in the interest of time, in the interest of being smart, we are not going to be impetuous. We are going to wait. We're going to take our time. We're going to do things right. And that includes picking up all the troops necessary. Heck, we're even going to start grabbing Hydras. Because you might as well. Might as well. They might have slowed us down just a little bit. Marini might not be able to grab everybody here. 24 and 9. Uh, we might be able to meet up here yes we can perfect uh the hydras are going to go in over the golems then we're gonna go here and do one more stack of titans and arc magi and rocks not a bad final fight just because rocks are pretty good and then so our final army is going to consist of a few less Titans than our enemy has, um, but plenty more supporting troops and better supporting troops. So it'll be 33 Titans, 58 Rocks, 21 Red Dragons, 48 Arc Magi, 46 Hydra. And that will absolutely be enough to defeat our foe here. So uh, month three, week two, day six is going to be the final. It's a glorious victory. We did end up losing 17 of those red dragons. This is not nothing, um, but especially when we're talking about stacks of creatures of this quality and tier, and then this many. The little bit of attack and defense I have, the three and five over his one and one, really adds up in a big way. Because think about it this way. My titans, if I was to attack their titans with their 16 defense... My 18 attack, I'm going to be doing 20% bonus damage. With my 20 defense to his 16 attack, he's going to be doing 20% reduced damage to me. So in a straight up fight, 
My 33 Titans are tougher than his 37, and, and they should win with no interference and no additional spells. Um, so every little bit of attack, every little bit of defense matters because we're talking about percentages. 10%, um, 5% stacks up really quickly with these many troops. Um, priority is, of course, the Titans and then the Arc Magi. Don't really care about these other troops here in the middle, but what spells can I cast that will prevent the enemy from doing much? Um, I think that now is not a bad time for a Disrupting Ray because that's going to be an additional 30% damage that my Titans can do and then some of my other creatures that have less uh, attack skill, that, that moves the Arc Magi from doing 5% reduced damage up to 10% bonus damage. Um, and every little bit helps out a lot. These dragons are gonna do much of the same. It's gonna be it's gonna be good. So let's get started. Let's see what spell he casts though. I'm kind of interested. Anti-magic on the Titans. I'm very happy then that I cast the Disrupting Ray when I could because that anti-magic does not get rid of the Disrupting Ray. So that's excellent. We're going to be killing three to four. Red dragons are going to take a pounding. Don't care. Even though there's this opportunity maybe to do that flame breath attack, I don't care. Titans are still the toughest sons of guns out here. And so they're going to get all of the attention. They're going to get all of the smoke, as it were. Okay. So because they got to go first, now their Arc Magi are anti-magic. You cannot use your dispel ability from your Arc Magi to stop their creatures anti-magic we're just gonna have to wait for that to wear off i can though bless my titans and nothing bad's gonna happen because they're going to do their damage without any worry from a spell uh, again we're focusing on their toughest creature no shame none whatsoever i don't hate that decision from them no, I do. I, I hate that decision, actually. Why would you do a little bit of damage to my Titans, knowing that you're going to then lose that whole stack of creatures? Does it really matter when the fight is this overwhelming? No, but... Mm. Eh. I'm going to cure, and then I'm just going to hit auto combat, and we're just going to watch this fight play out from here. Good luck on the Titans. Oh my gosh. Not a bad time to take out all the Arc Magi. If you can take them all out in one go, you might as well. Just be efficient with your time and, and things of that nature. Getting the Hydras back into a defensive position, I understand. Like, I understand. What is your win condition? It's the Titans. But but still, in this fight, it doesn't really matter. Um, I guess that's just an example of the way that the AI cannot always look two or three turns in advance. It's usually making the best decision based off of right now. The few exceptions that I've seen are things like Disrupting Ray, actually, um, where the the ai will know hey i'm just gonna start layering on these disrupting rays again and again and again and again um and i've seen i've seen the old ai do that more than here and i think that the reason why that was was not because it was looking forward into the future it was actually just the programmers um the game designers placing a higher emphasis on disrupting ray because they knew it was such a powerful spell it felt like my enemies were always disrupting raying my creatures but ultimately it turned out to be a pretty good decision um, because it's a spell that sticks around for the entirety of the combat anyway so we do win this scenario we take out their 37 titans we do lose 11 of the red dragons three of our titans uh we absolutely waited until there was no chance the enemy could have beaten us we we probably needed to go and collect one more week's worth of troops but um all the same it cost us a little bit of time that is okay we're gonna pick up the mysticism and the diplomacy we are maxed out as of right now purple player has been vanquished and that will conclude the first scenario here for wizard's isle and i'm happy for it so we will look at scenario two the eternal scrolls next time um and and then it looks like this is going to be another really short campaign so far we have spent 69 days uh, we're gonna have some choices before us very very quickly and i'm excited for it folks thank you so very very much for the support thanks for the comments and the the interaction i appreciate every single one of you and again i love that we have such a great game that we can all talk about i think that everybody enjoys heroes of might and magic too and when i say everybody i mean i'm sure there's people out there that don't but if you're here if you've made it to this point i know that you love heroes of might and magic too and i'm grateful that you do because um, i love it too so thank you for everything uh and i'm looking forward to spending some more time with you next time take care of you take care of your family your friends anyone who's out there um, and take care of yourself if you don't who will uh, my name is fix fox I will see you next time.